Hello. It's me, Yvonne, your local non-binary witch, and I'm here to talk to you about polytheism and why I am a polytheist and an animist. So, um, first of all, definition of terms, polytheism means many gods. Uh, it doesn't mean the worship of parrots, as people quite often comically remark. And animism means the idea that everything has a spirit. Um, and this is distinct from pantheism, which is the idea that there is a spirit that encompasses everything. Um, so I think that there may well be an underlying substrate of consciousness throughout the universe. Most indigenous worldviews, and indeed, um, I think Hinduism uh, embraces the idea that there's this underlying substrate of consciousness and different traditions within Hinduism would call that Brahman, uh, possibly Atman, and also Shakti. And there are other traditions within Hinduism, and Hinduism is an incredibly complicated subject. So. I'm not going to show my ignorance to any Hindus watching this by presuming to pronounce upon the topic. Um, however, uh, Shakti is often seen as the divine which is imminent in the world and Shakti is feminine. So I believe that um, there is this substrate of consciousness. Now, my consciousness emerged from that substrate. Um, so did the consciousness of deities and spirits of place and land whites and anything that that has awareness right and that would include animals and also trees and rocks okay so if this substrate um, gives rise to other consciousnesses um, it in itself is because it is infinite and it is loose and formless and inchoate, can't itself have a consciousness. Now, this is distinct from the platonic idea of the single divine source, right? Um, the single divine source is held to exist outside time and space. What I'm talking about is, is a, a consciousness that is distributed throughout the universe probably as a result of emergent complexity. So um, the concept of emergent complexity is that if you have um, if you have a very complex system, then consciousness can emerge from that as byproduct byproduct of that complexity. And uh, so that's how I think the consciousness of uh, the consciousnesses that exist in the universe came into being. OK, because that's how consciousness is produced in our brains. So it seems very likely that if there is consciousness elsewhere in the universe, apart from in here, um, that it must come from the complexity of the universe in the same way that ours does, right? Um, from the complexity of our brains. Uh, at least my brain's complex. I can't speak for anyone else. So <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so this substrate of consciousness um, because it is non-local and infinite, uh, it can't actually have a specific personality, right? So that means there can't be one overarching deity that controls everything because everything is emergent and everything comes uh, into being from this substrate. Um, the Christian theologian Paul Tillich actually referred to it as the ground of, referred to God as the ground of all being. And some centuries before him, the philosopher Spinoza, Baruch Spinoza, um, said that God and nature were one and the same, Deus sive natura. And various other people have said similar things since then. So if we see God as the ground of all being, um, or you know, the, the Shakti as the consciousness substrate from which everything else emerges, that is completely different from the platonic one. Um, it's also different from the idea of the Godhead in Judaism and Christianity, uh, because they are based on the platonic ideas of deity. So can't be the same, right? Um, 
anyway, uh, there are some interesting parallels between Judaism and Hinduism in that um, in Hinduism you have Shiva uh, is the, the transcendent godhead and Shakti is the imminent um, divine and they are yearning to seek each other and within um, Judaism you have Yahweh as the transcendent godhead and Shekinah as the imminent divine and they are yearning to meet each other so there's some interesting similarities there so um, what this tells me is that um, there are many different deities and they all have dominion if you like over specific realms of nature so like there's the storm deities and there's you know earth deities and um forest deities and so on and so forth and they each have they each emerge as a consciousness from their specific place and then sometimes they become really powerful uh, and then that's how you get the deity of a country or the deity of um a specific ecosystem or bio bioregion right um so the interesting thing about these deities is that they can't be omnipotent and they're probably not omnipresent either because the thing is if you are omnipotent and omnipresent um then it would be very very difficult to focus your infinite consciousness down into a point where you could actually communicate with a specific individual okay uh, which means that yahweh and yeshua and all that crowd um are clearly non-infinite you know they are clearly finite and local um because in order to have a consciousness that can focus on a specific thing you have to be finite and local so you know deities have infinite and non-local consciousness and so we can benefit deities by giving them access to our finite and local consciousness and um, we can gain benefit from the getting access to their infinite and non-local consciousness, right? Um, but even though their consciousnesses are very, very large um, and seemingly infinite, um, they are, and, and they're not focused in time, they're not the ultimate divine source or the substrate of consciousness because they can't be. If you were that big and that, in coate, then you can't focus down and be a specific deity. It doesn't make sense. Um, so it's also interesting if you look at all the different theologies of different religions around the world. Um, you've got Hinduism has many gods and an underlying substrate of consciousness. Most forms of paganism have the same idea. Um, I can't really speak for indigenous religions of North America because um, I don't know enough about them and um, but they do have a creator and various different culture heroes and that are specific to specific places uh, so I think that fits the pattern um, if you look at the ancient Greeks they had the similar idea uh, a lot of African religions have specific deities like many deities and spirits of place um, and uh, you know in China you've got dragons of specific places you've got multiple deities um, you know just about every religion in the world uh, agrees that there are many deities so monotheism and its derivations are an aberration from the norm right and it seems logical to me that if you have, um, you know, if you if you have if you, if deity exists, then it must be kind of obvious to everyone, right? Because why would a deity um, choose to reveal itself at a specific time and place in a specific country within a tiny time frame to a small group of people who then have to go out and spread the word? Doesn't make sense, right? If you're going to reveal yourself as a deity, you're going to reveal yourself in every tree and flower and, you know, movement of the wind and 
uh, like so the divinity in everything is what is revealing the divine to us at all times um not a specific man in palestine 2000 years ago right not logical um and different places around the world different cultures around the world have had encounters with the divine and with deities and have interpreted that through the filter of their culture and that's great because now we have many different cultures understandings of the divine which is awesome um and you know if you have a religion that is generally good for the planet um you know like indigenous religions of north america are very good for the planet because they're very uh, they look after their environment and they live in harmony with nature and you know they know all the different medicines in the in the environment um and they look after the fish stocks and they look after the animal population um so they're living in harmony with their environment that's clearly a really good religion right if you have a religion that comes in destroys everything um acts as a gateway drug for capitalism and generally trashes everything and trashes everybody else's religion and destroys their culture it's probably a bad religion right seems logical to me um another interesting thing by the way uh is that most of the religions that i've mentioned um believe in reincarnation um so the fact that religions all around the world uh, which would include buddhism hinduism um uh you know paganism in all its forms different religions in africa probably um and also uh ancient paganism i think i already said that uh, actually judaism esoteric judaism believes in reincarnation as well um so you know that's that's a very widespread belief uh, which suggests that it might be right um so basically all the different religions around the world have a polytheistic perspective uh, perspective on things um they may see some kind of a divine source or underlying substrate of consciousness um but polytheism is the most logical so either there are many gods or there is one god um like the idea that there's three in one or two in one or some other bizarre combination seems very unlikely right um and all these different deities present different manifestations different ways of expressing gender so the the deities also have many genders um so that's you know validation of queerness right there um and so i think that expresses pretty well why i'm a polytheist um so the way i see it is that when when you have the the substrate of consciousness um people go and interact with sacred places so the picture that i've got on my zoom wallpaper right now is brin kechti the uh, on anglesey in north wales and it's a burial mound and most burial mounds seem to have a spirit of place associated with them and so when you go there you kind of ask permission of the spirit of place if you can go in and the same applies to stone circles and so people have gone to these place sacred places like holy wells and forests and sacred trees and burial mounds and stone circles time and time again over the centuries and they keep going there and they keep interacting with the spirit of place and, and as those people bring those the, the gift of attention and interaction to those spirits then that spirit becomes more powerful because it has it has become aware of itself because people are interacting with it um and gradually some of these spirits got bigger and more powerful and that's how we get gods um so um if you think of it as being like um a gravity well uh so if you're familiar with your with your physics um when you get a gravity well um the time and space is like a rubber sheet that stretches across the universe and um a planet when you put a planet into that rubber sheet it, it makes a dent in the rubber sheet like a well and then other things kind of spiral down and fall into that gravity well that's been made by the 
mass of the planet. So I think that the, the substrate of consciousness also acts like um, the proverbial rubber sheet of space time. And when you have a consciousness, it acts as like the weight of a planet in in the rubber sheet. So it creates a gravity well. And as more consciousness and interaction and you know attention comes in, that consciousness gets bigger and bigger. Um, that is my theory. So, um, so yeah, kind of com uh, compatible with physics as well. So, um, seems to me that polytheism is the most logical thing um, because you can't have if if you're infinite, then you can't have a finite and local consciousness with which to interact with people. So, therefore, there must be. The, the underlying defined substrate must be a substrate of consciousness and um, must be like a fuzzy inchoate thing and then things emerge from it um, in a local and finite way. So that's my theory of deity and deities. So I hope you enjoyed that and um, take care out there and bless it be.